Hello everyone, this is my home lab slash home networking rack. And today we're gonna take some of this commercial RF modulator equipment and start streaming our very own TV channels all throughout the house, straight from the rack. This is gonna let me stream whatever content I want over whatever channels I choose. I'll be able to tune to them on TVs throughout the house. So follow along as I take my home lab rack back to the 90s. All right, so here's the plan. We're gonna set up our own television stations, <laughs> internal to my home. I've got a pair of these rack mountable RF modulators. What they do is they can take a composite signal, so for example, in our case, from a Raspberry Pi, and turn it into RF so that I can tune to it with one of my TVs. And I'll go over that and a couple of the RF modulators I have and how they work in a minute. The, R the Raspberry Pi is just gonna be super simple. I'm gonna mount my Plex server. I've got tons of television shows, Futurama, all legally acquired and manually ripped, of course. No, I'm serious, look. I'll go over the Raspberry Pi setup, how I got it spitting out video over composite. It's a super basic Raspbian install. We're just gonna use VLC on the command line to stream the TV shows. Super simple, no OSMC or Kodi or any of that complicated stuff. Then we'll rack this stuff up and I'll show you the end product. Why would I do this in 2023? Well, basically I wanna be able to go to one of my TVs, turn it on to a channel and have it just streaming random shows and I don't get to control it, just like the good old days from cable. So I have all these TV shows and I never watch them because I fire up Plex and I can't decide which episode I wanna watch or I get bored and I go to another one. So if I just have it streaming on a couple channels, you know, Futurama on one, something else on another, I think I'm gonna get a lot more use out of these CRTs and I'll watch these TV shows that I do like a lot more. So that's the basic idea. This is something called an RF modulator. So it can take in a composite video signal, the usual yellow, white, red that you've probably seen before. So something like from an old video game system or a VCR or anything that's outputting over composite. And it can turn that into RF coming out over coax something your television tuner can understand. So I can set this to a channel of my choice. So I can say channel A here, this one happens to be able to take two inputs. Channel A, set it to channel 22, and it'll output over here on coax to something I can tune to on channel 22 with my television. This is gonna be the typical example of an RF modulator you're gonna see on other YouTube videos of guys that have done similar stuff. They're still pretty readily available. I think this one's from the late 90s, 1997. Um, so yeah, this is the one you're gonna see that's pretty pretty common. But for my use case, I've got a pair of these blonder tongue, <laughs> uh, commercial grade RF modulator units. So these aren't something you would have found in a house. These are built to be on 24 seven for decades at a time. This one very well could have been. It's hardwired inside. I haven't checked if I can switch it. I'm sure I can to channel 13, pretty similar to that, that other, other unit. It's got video in, it happens to be coming over coax, but you can easily convert that to RCA uh, with these simple little adapters you can pick up. It's got video, audio in, and then just like the other one, RF out that goes over to your TV. So these are the ones I'm hoping to rack up today once we get going, but for the purposes of just showing what an RF modulator is all about, we'll stick with this channel plus for demoing. And to get going, let's consult the manual. So it says when talking about video cables to hook up, it calls them VCR cables. One or two sets of these cables are required to connect the one or two video devices, VCR, satellite receiver, laser disc player, video camera, etc. So for a demo, I like that idea. This is a laser disc player. And this is a laser disc. We're gonna use this to test this RF modulator. It's got composite video out and left and right audio out, as you would expect. In fact, I think laser discs only had composite out. So we'll hook this up to that RF modulator and see what we can get going. All right, pretty straightforward. This is the video and audio coming out of the laser disc player into channel A of this thing, and it's gonna output it obviously over coax to the CRT over here. And the way you configure these channel plus things is you click one, two, 
wait for the LED. One, two, wait for the LED. This means that this channel is now configured to output on channel 22. So I could do one, two, three, one, two, three, four, and that'd be 34, and so on. Uh, you get the idea. All right, got you guys pointed at the screen. What we'll do is we'll turn the modulator on and we can see the screen go blue. So that's kind of sort of the default output from this laser displayer when it's doing nothing. Let's close this guy up. Let it seat the disc and then get it spinning up here. Love seeing that old font on this stuff. I love that typeface. It's spinning up, doing its thing. All right, and there you go. So yeah, what better way to test this uh, late 90s RF modulator than with some period correct laser disc media. <laughs> I'm gonna fast forward here. And yeah, it's working great. Really good picture actually. So yeah, I think you get the idea. Anything coming out with composite goes into the modulator and you can tune to it whatever channel the modulator is programmed to. Okay, before we hop into the software, just a quick couple notes on how this is hooked up. This is a uh, good old channel plus, we went over that. It's hooked up to the Raspberry Pi and then coax over to the television and you can see there's the Raspberry Pi desktop. Word of warning, if you're gonna go down this rabbit hole, get ready to buy all sorts of adapters and cables and just tons of stuff, just to warn you. And these Raspberry Pis, at least this 3B Plus I've got, which is all I've got, they use this TRRS jack, I think it's called, you know, to split it out into composite. And none of the ones you buy on Amazon or get at the store or whatever have the same pinout. The Raspberry Pi has a weird pinout. I'll post a link in the description to the exact pinout. You can see this total hack job, cap hack job cable I had to do a couple years ago when I was messing around with this before. It's kind of annoying. So I've bought, I've bought tons of them. None of them work. Uh, I've always had to make my own. So I'll post the pinout in the description. But now let's uh, go look at the software I'm running on the Pi and actually get this thing showing a video over RF. All right, this is a brand new install of Raspbian as of this morning with the graphical user interface. Didn't do anything else to it. And actually in the back here, you can see my camera can pick up the CRT, so that's convenient. That's the Raspberry Pi desktop right there. The first thing we'll do is go over the config.txt settings for composite. So let's take a look at boot config. And of course you would need to edit this um, when you're setting up the Raspberry Pi on the computer you're um, imaging the SD card with, but plenty of tutorials about that online. I'm going to show you the settings I had to change. So I had to specifically set, let's get some line numbers here on line 17 and 18. I had to specifically set the width and height to 720 by 480 for my setup here. You might not have to, but what was happening is the Raspberry Pi would boot and after the boot screen, it would just go black. I wouldn't see the desktop. So I had to do this. You wanna make sure that HDMI force hot plug is commented out. You don't want that. And then down here on line 35 and 36, I had to add these. You want HDMI ignore hot plug equals one to get it to totally ignore the HDMI port. You want SD TV mode equals zero. I'm NTSC, I'm in North America. There's other settings for PAL or your particular region. So you can Google these online. I'll put the these exact settings in the description. You won't have to memorize them, but that gets the setup out of the way basically. I also mounted a bunch of media. So in the home directory, I've got a media folder with a bunch of stuff in it. I've done nothing else. So what I'm gonna do to stream these videos um, and have my own TV channels is just use VLC. So you can type VLC as a media player, an open source media player. So you can just type VLC media, and then this is an episode of Family Guy, and you'll see right away, it's starting up. You'll have to trust me that the sound works. I have it muted for obvious reasons. And then if you kill it, it goes away. Uh, and then like we could play something that's, you know, actually good, like the first episode of Daria. Remember Daria? Anyway, it starts up right away, just like the other one. And so you can imagine where I'm gonna go with this. So I'm gonna write some scripts or maybe a little program that I can point it at a folder 
and it'll traverse all the folders, randomize the list, and just play them one after the other. When it runs out, it'll it'll randomize again and start over. That's going to be the whole the whole idea. I don't have that quite working yet. If you're interested in that, let me know. Uh, I'll make it open source and make it available for anyone that wants to use it once I once I have it working. But that's basically the game plan. Super simple, no you know full blown media distro open you know. But I already have Plex for that, so I wanted to keep this super simple and as minimal amount of dependencies basically. So let's go hook up some of those RF modulators in the rack and we'll complete this project. Here's what I'm thinking. I'm gonna have another modern server coming in here someday. I'm gonna have another UPS here. I've got a couple vintage machines coming here. I'll show you a sneak peek of that later. So that leaves me with this space. So I think I'm gonna push this panel down and we'll put the blunder tongue modulators right here. All right, that's looking really cool. Kind of makes me want to get another rack just for AV stuff. And the rack is full now. Everything's got a plate. Very nice. So next, would you believe me if I told you none of these coax cables go into that workshop over there where I actually want to send the RF signal. So what we're going to do is I've got 50 feet of coax here and I'm going to send it from the rack I'll take this plate off and just send it through. I'm gonna redo what's going on with that anyway. So I'll get this ran and be back in a minute. Perfect. Okay, so join me in this chaos here. Everything's hooked up, but all is not well. You'll notice that our old friend, the Channel Plus is still around, even though I have two of these. These blunder tongue units are giving me a lot of trouble. I'll go over that in a second. One of them's hooked up, so this is channel 13. This thing's handling channel 22. And I've got two Raspberry Pis. I'm not in love with that. I'd really rather have some of these servers take care of this. So I gotta figure out some sort of thin client solution or something, I don't know. I don't like, <laughs> there's a third Raspberry Pi. I don't like having these Raspberry Pis float around all over the rack and they're hard to find now. So like if someone wants to do this, they're not going to be able to find a Raspberry Pi. So it's kind of frustrating. Um, fun fact, this is a splitter. You can actually take the inputs into the output of the splitter and go to the TV. So I've got channel 13 coming here, channel 22 on the back. It'll combine the two signals into one. And so now I can access both channels on the TV here. So that's kind of interesting. And then let's take a look at uh, what's going on with these guys. Okay, so this one is on channel 13. It works, but it lets off this terrible humming noise, some sort of interference from the video signal. So even if audio is not hooked up, there's this terrible hum coming over the TV when you turn up the volume even a little bit. I'll, maybe I'll try to show you guys. And then this one, I don't get any output at all. So I... I opened it up, I did all the basic checks. Nothing is obviously wrong, so hopefully I'm just doing something stupid and that's not actually a repair I'm gonna have to do. But if anyone knows anything about either of these units, the hum, some terrible hum coming off this one, and then this one has no output at all. It does have power. All the power rails seem fine. Let me know, so I'm, I'm totally new to this. So. so yeah, I guess what I'm saying is I'll probably have a follow-up video where I get these two guys working or find another one for parts or something. But in the meantime, it is working. I do have two channels and let me go show you the, the finished product here. All right, so here's the finished product. We've got C-Lab streaming on channel 22. And then if I go to the other one, channel 13, we've got some Futurama. So <laughs> this is great. I can just randomly turn on this TV and I'll have stuff streaming 24 hours a day and I won't have to think about it. All right, that didn't go exactly as I planned, but eventually I'll have a follow-up video fixing those two rack mountable RF units and get everything flowing through, flowing through those. In the meantime, I'm super happy with the setup. I can just turn on the TV like I wanted and flip to a channel and watch some TV shows and not have to think about it. So if you made it this far, I really appreciate it. If you haven't already, consider subscribing if you like this content. It keeps me motivated, really means a lot to me. And I have a little preview here of some vintage server videos that are coming soon. So. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next one.